One of the number one reasons why women struggle with dating and relationships today is that they choose men who are not ready for anything real. Ladies, there are lots of great relationship-ready men out here. However, you need to learn how to choose them. I wrote this book to teach you how to do just that. Get your copy of Choose Well, A Simple Formula to Determine the Best Man for You on Amazon today. Good morning. Good Sunday morning. All right. So I am up this morning because I've got to take my mom to the airport. My mom is actually headed to Budapest, Hungary today, and she'll probably get there tomorrow with her group of uh, widowed church lady friends. <laughs> so I am headed into the city, pick up my mom, take her to the airport and uh, pray over her, you know, and just make sure she gets there safely. But I wanted to in the probably 15 minutes that I have and driving into town and we're going to see how my phone does. We're going to see how the, the, you know, the cell service does because sometimes when I go into town, my service is not good. I don't understand that, but we'll see. We'll see if it can hang in. We'll see if it can hold on. But here is something I wanted to talk to the ladies about. Uh, ladies, the one thing, the one thing that women need to master. You all need to master this. Y'all suck at this. I see it every day, all day. And you suck at this. And here's what's interesting. So there are a lot of men that watch my videos and a lot of men that are on my platform. And so they see me in this element, right? They see me. And I've had, I've even had men that were interested in me, it, men that were interested in me romantically, but they see me in this element. That's why I don't ever, ever, ever share my platform, share my Instagram platform, share my YouTube, share my face. I don't ever share my social media platform with any man that's interested in me. That's called none of your business. That's called, that's, you know, my professional business. Like that's my professional business. Just like I wouldn't tell him all the details of my private practice. That's what I do. That's not who I am. Okay. So I get a lot of men that will reach out or they'll express some sort of romantic interests, right? And, you know, they see me in this element and they assume like this is what they're getting all the time. No, it's not. No, it's not. This is called a persona. This is called my business. This is called UGC creator. <laughs> That's what this is called. The romantic Anita, the Anita that is your woman, the Anita that is your wife is very different very different. And you wouldn't know that because you're not dating Anita. You're watching Anita on a screen. You're watching Anita on YouTube. You're watching Anita on your phone. That is not the romantic Anita. That is not the feminine woman that you're married to or in a relationship with Anita. I am technically in my masculine when I'm making these videos because I am teaching. So if you know anything about polarity and energy shifts, we, we all have both energies residing within us, and I have to step into more of a masculine persona to teach, to educate, to talk, to instruct. All of those things are very masculine. Thank you so much, Garland, for buying a badge. I appreciate you. Okay? So this is not who I am every day. This is not who I am with my loved ones, especially my man. This is not at all who I am. It is a part of who I am. And because people want everybody to be one dimensional, they want everybody to be one dimensional. Like, oh, this is what I see online. So this must be how she is all the time. No, people are not like that. I am very different with very different people. I am very different with my children. I am very different with my parents. I am very different with my friends. I am very different online. And look, even the few friends that I have that every now and again, my videos will come across their feed. They're like cracking up. They're cracking up. They're like, who is this? <laughs> who is this Anita? Who, who is Auntie Anita? Who is AAA? <laughs> like they're cracking up because that is not who I am. Just sitting at home. I just got, look, I'm, I'm filthy. I just got out of my garden. I've been in my garden all morning trying to, to, to t tear back this ivy that's in the backyard and clear out more land, clear out more space. Like I'm filthy. 
I'm sweaty and filthy. So what you see on this on this video, <laughs> that's not all of me. Don't do that. Like, please understand that people are multidimensional beings. Okay, I had to go off on that little rant. All right, women need <laughs> women need to master this one thing. What is the one thing? And all the men, look, all the men are gonna stand up and clap when I say it. You ready? Y'all need to master the art of being quiet. You need to master the art of knowing when to say something, when to speak, and when to be quiet. That is what was messing y'all all up. <laughs> all of y'all is you do not know how to be quiet. You do not know how to, okay, that doesn't even require a response. Like that's not even a a word in y'all's vocabulary, which is, oh, that doesn't require a response. You never heard of that. Because <laughs> you think you got to respond to everything. Everything requires a response. I got to say something about everything. And look, it's things that people ain't even asking you. There's no question mark on the end. And you talking. <laughs> you talking. Look, how about this? I have a firm rule. This is insane. A lot of people have told me this is insane. I actually have a firm rule that when I'm texting a person, and, you know, I'm normally texting very brief, very short. Hey, where are we meeting? What are we doing? How's your day? You know, very brief and short. I'm communicating over the phone. I'm communicating verbally. I'm communicating over FaceTime or whatever. I'm texting to exchange information. And I have a firm rule, y'all. I'm going to move my phone because it's getting real. It's about to get hot out here. I'm sorry, I got to move my phone in front of the uh, the AC vent because it's going to overheat. I don't get it, but anyway. Uh, but I have a firm rule that if a person sends a message and that message has a period, if that message, put it this way, if that message ends in a period or an exclamation point, right, I don't respond back. I only respond back to messages that have a question mark. Like I have, I've mastered the art of doing that because I've taught myself to stop over explaining, to stop feeling like I have to respond to everything. I don't, I don't, everything does not require a response. And I've, I've taught myself that lesson that if their last message did not come with a question mark, I don't respond. I don't respond to it. Like in my mind, it's a statement, right? They're making a statement. I, they see that I read the statement, the end. I do not need to respond. But I notice, and I don't know, I mean, it could be that women are, are socially conditioned. Maybe they're socially conditioned to always have something to say. Maybe in their childhood, they couldn't say anything. And now in their adulthood, they're going to be heard. <laughs> like, I don't know what the wound is. But it's something going on where you feel like you got to have your mouth in everything. There's something really going on there. Okay. Okay. I, I see some comments here. I'm at the light. She said exactly that. True. Not all the time. You need to talk. Yep. Yep. Please remind people there are three generations walking the earth that lived a full life without texting. Yeah. And I'm one of them. I can't stay in Texas. I learned that I'm passionate about very specific things. If, if what's said doesn't apply. I shuts it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So texting for me isn't is information exchange, right? As soon as a person starts talking about their feelings, as soon as a person, um, you know, if they if they have these these run on sentences, I call them. I call them. And please let me tell you this right now. Do not. <laughs> this is what a lot of men don't understand about me. If I express that, hey, I want to get to know you and I'm not going to do it via text and you keep texting, I will ignore you. Like, that's the answer. I will ignore you. I'm not going to keep, because this is what women do. They keep responding to the text like, hey, I don't like texting. No, just don't respond. Just stop responding to the texting altogether. Okay? Or call him on the phone, but stop responding. And that's what I do. Many a man has been cut clean off because I just don't respond. And then look, he'll see me somewhere or he'll, you know, 
be in my presence. Well, what happened? What happened? I don't get to know people through text. That's what happened. You continue to text after I, you know, very sweetly said that, and I stopped replying. And you did absolutely nothing. You didn't call. You didn't, you know, so I'm good. I had one gentleman, though. This is a funny story. This was years ago. Um, He, you know, just basically, he was known for not talking on the phone. Like, everybody knew this about him. Other people told me this. Oh, girl, yeah, no, you're not going to get him on the phone. You're not going to, he ain't going to talk on no phone. He ain't going to call. He ain't going to, okay. Okay, let's see. And sure enough, he started that texting game. I ignored him. I ignored him some more. I ignored him again. And during it, I think it was two weeks. It took two weeks. That man broke down. That man called me. And look, I was in a session and he left a long message. He left a long message. And after that, I went and told my girlfriend that knew him. I said, oh, you know, so-and-so called me. She said, what? I said, and he left a voicemail. What? Like that, that was like, Everybody knew that about him, that he did not talk on the phone and he definitely didn't leave no voicemail. He even told me that. Oh, I don't leave no voicemail. I don't do no voice notes. I don't know. I don't want nobody listening to my voice over and over. I don't want nobody, you know, inferring things from what I said and listening to the message over and over. And darn if he didn't number one call and number two left a voicemail because I was like, nah, I need is good. So I said what I said, okay, but ladies, this applies in all the realms of communication. This applies with if, they, if he makes a statement, okay, you, and there's no question mark, you don't have to respond. Like, the statement was made, right? And this goes back to the ego work. A lot of us need to do work on our ego. We have this thing where we have to get the last word. I don't need the last word. And as I've stated in another video, Anita is not petty. Anita is grown all day long. Anita is the bigger person all day long. <laughs> like, I pride myself on being the bigger person. Okay? So, look, when other people are talking ish about me or, or trying to bad mouth me, like, my reputation is so clean, other people are like, nah, that ain't, nah, it's you. <laughs> like, they, they check the person talking about me. Like, nah, it's you. It's you because Anita is not petty. Anita is going to try to talk to you. She's going to try to communicate with you. You know, um, she's going to reach out like she's always going to be the bigger person. So if this thing ain't going well, it's you. <laughs> like everybody say that. Other people say that. OK, so uh -uh. I pride myself on being the bigger person. And guess what? You should, too. You should, too. It's not a flex calling yourself petty especially as an adult. Ugh. It is not a flex to always need to have the last word or to get revenge and all this other. That's petty. That's, that's, that's immature. That's dumb. You shouldn't need to do that. Okay? You should have, you should have more maturity about yourself. Okay? So, no. Mm -mm. But ladies, y'all got to work on this. Y'all got to work on this. I'm just being honest. And how you feel about it is how you feel about it. Y'all got to work on this, okay? You got to know when to speak and when to be quiet. And remember, healthy male leadership, it requires good followers. It requires people to vet that person and to make sure that person is, in fact, a healthy, strong leader, is, in fact, you know, has a good plan, has a good strategy, and is implementing it. And then you do it. <laughs> you do it. You do it. And you can tell a woman that has been, you can tell a woman that has been uh, abused by a man who has been neglected by a man. You can tell a woman who, who doesn't have a clue what healthy masculine leadership is because she immediately jumps to, oh, he just wants to be in control. Oh, he just wants to abuse me. Oh, he just wants, okay, baby, 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 talk to somebody. Okay, calm down. There is such a thing as healthy male leadership. And look, it happens at your job. <laughs> like That's what I don't understand. Like, that's what's got my mind twisted. It happens at work. Most of y'all have male bosses. Most of y'all have male CEOs. Most of y'all have male supervisors, male managers. 
Yeah, some females sprinkled in there, but come on. You can listen to your boss, a man, tell you, hey, we need these reports. We got this. This meeting is on this and this and that. And you don't have a problem with it. But the man you're dating, like, you can't be quiet. You don't do that at work. You don't always got something to say in the meeting. <laughs> like, I, I just, it don't make sense, y'all. It don't make sense. It doesn't. So if there are men leading you in other avenues, other areas, at church, at work, in these other groups you're in, I'm confused. I am truly confused. So that's it. That's the message. (laughs) Like, like ladies, seriously, put that on your to-do list. I need to work on being quiet. I need to work on biting my tongue more. I need to work on minding my business. If, if, if my opinion was not asked, don't give it. Y'all need to work on that. Okay? Because like I said, I require healthy male leadership. There's a whole lot of stuff I don't want to, uh, uh, to put my thoughts and opinions on. I really don't. Like, what are we doing? Where are we going? What time are we going? Blah, blah, blah. I don't want to plan. Can I be honest? I don't want to plan. I don't want to think. I want to go off and enjoy my time with you. I want you to have, you know, put something together. I want to feel safe and secure. And as long as those boxes are checked, we good. I feel safe. I feel secure. I trust you. We good. But see, if that's not the case, that then now you need to you need to check yourself, right? Because what are you doing with somebody that you don't feel safe and secure with? What are you doing with somebody you don't trust? And again, y'all hate the responsibility of being a good gatekeeper. But it falls squarely on your shoulders, ladies. Your number one responsibility is to be a good gatekeeper. That's it. You don't have a whole lot of jobs, but that's it. Just like you have to have the babies. Men don't have the babies. Women have the babies. That's your job. You're not going to get out of that. And don't get clever talking about, you know, people, what is it, the surrogacy and all that mess. You know what I'm talking about. (laughs) So they'll stop getting clever. But yeah, we have to learn how to keep our mouth closed. And and y'all know what I, y'all, and it, it's triggering women, just me saying that. <laughs> Feminist women are losing their mind right now, just me saying them words. <laughs> how dare you tell me to be quiet? How dare you tell me to stop talking? No, oh, Lord. But it's a wound. It's a wound you need to check. All right, I got to run in here and grab a package, and I'm going to get my mom. You all, please have a wonderful Sunday. Uh, You're right. What will you be doing with someone you're not comfortable with to be with you? Precisely, precisely. Okay? But ladies, be a good gatekeeper. That's it. That's the message. Be a better gatekeeper. Choose better men. Men be better. Okay? So this is what y'all don't want to hear. Until men are better, women choose better men. But my message to men is to be better. Be better men, okay? And women, until that happens, choose better men. Don't choose those shitty men. All right? Have a great Sunday. And as always, stay open to love.